Now I shall request uh, Dr. Vijay Bhatkar, who, who is presiding over today's function, to speak to this August gathering. Dr. Bhatkar. I think this is a very memorable and momentous evening for all of us. We are celebrating one of the most distinguished sons of Mother India today in the presence of, in the presence of respected Sudarshanji and a new Atomic Energy Commission, Dr. Banerjee, who is going to steer the program next two years, maybe more years ahead. And this initiative has been taken by Vigyan Bharti, Vigyan Bharti of Mumbai. I must say some few words about, a few words about Vidyan Bharati. Vidyan Bharati began in Kerala as a Swadeshi science movement. Now when we say the word Swadeshi, the plank on which we got a freedom really. It is interesting to see that today Swadeshi is being talked by Barack Obama and also by Brown in UK. They are worried that we might take their jobs in computing, in information technology, in services. But they never worry when they impose many technologies or technology restrictions, not only on India but several develop developing countries at that time. So times have changed. This is an interesting phenomenon. Signing of nuclear treaty in 2008, and still the process continues, has been aptly described by Dr. Mashilkar some time back. This is India's third freedom, and that is technological. We had a freedom of India in 47. We had freedom, economic freedom. In 1991, we liberated the economy. And now we have technological freedom. Now this has just not happened. And we must thank here the path pursued by successive governments. Starting from independence itself, Pandit Jawala Nehru, Mrs. Gandhi, Rajiv Gandhi, later on Atal Bihari, Bajpayee ji, that we said that the development of India the plank of development of India would also be science and technology strongly and this path was pursued for several decades and we have seen the results today and we have seen the results yesterday also. While speaking of technological freedom and this wonderful question was asked by Dr. Bar Fonke that and again by Professor Thatte that how the embargoes have, was it a great constraint, was it a challenge and was it an opportunity? And as you said that every challenge is a great opportunity, particularly for India. Whenever things were denied to India, after Pokhran 1, we know the embargoes which we had and we said that slowly in some field they were liberalized and we were again a little complacent and came the decision to have Pokhran 2 in 1998, again the embargoes were missed. And there is no alternative to develop our 
foundations, solid foundations for science and technology in India and India's nuclear program initiated by Dr. Homi Bhabha and the great blueprint he initiated and by Vikram Sarabhai in the space program and your electronics and information technology, again the roots go to Dr. Bhabha and we saw in supercomputing there has been strong foundations were laid for development of science and tech, particularly the strategic technologies and we are seeing though the benefits of that. But these embargoes, as, as I perceive it, certainly have helped. Whenever India was denied a technology, I think Indian scientists and Indian people rose and came back with a big answer that we can develop these technologies right here. I remember when Indian supercomputer was developed and it was announced in the, free, in the Wall Street Journal in New York and the headlines were angry India does it. And many people in American cells so are uh, accused that if you United States had not denied that supercomputer, India would have never developed that, that technology. So uh, this has happened in the nuclear technology and how there's a basic foundation. So this was a big challenge really. And uh, the many websites on the web, if you see India's nuclear program and they attribute that denial, that embargoes, which really Indian scientists took the challenge and develop the really the foundations of science and technology. And now we are in the stage of not only mastering the entire thorium cycle or the entire life cycle, this one, but I see the day, I see an entirely different day ahead, that it will be the time now with the new technologies or the technologies which are developed here in the nuclear field and other fields as well, that India will be, Indian engineers will be building nuclear power plants for the world, not only for India. This will happen. This will happen. We have seen this in IT field, information technology field, we have seen in telecom field, we have seen many fields really, even in the space technology, what we are doing, Chandrayaan, when we launch those the experimental satellites of other nations, including advanced nations, the US or Germany or even Japan or Korea, this one, this we never imagined that this day one day we will be doing that. I don't see the day when sometimes when the nuclear treaty was signed, it's a really metaphoric, little philosophical thinking that why did US came forward to sign the nuclear treaty? And I felt that, and what I was seeing some of the situations elsewhere, that perhaps America has forgotten to build nuclear reactors and they want Indian engineers. Because after Three Mile Island, they never, never built many reactors really, sometimes it's accident. So I think it's a great time for India. And I believe that 21st century belongs to India. There's no question of that. I remember one of the talks, Sudarshan, you was there in Nagpur. We were talking that one day India will take over, not take over, overtake, not take over, overtake China very soon. And today's reports have come. In 2018, Indian economy, perhaps, if you can maintain our growth rates, if you have good governance, if you have at all, you have good governance, then by 2018, and this was not predicted at all by anyone until recently now, until yesterday, day before yesterday, that India will one day take, take, overtake China. In many ways, because we have built all these things on democratic platform. So all the confusion, all corruption, all kind of problems, we have built that. China has not faced that. It, China has not faced the problems of democracy and liberal frameworks like India. And I think that is a bigger challenge which Russia faced through the Glasnost and Perestroika earlier and we saw what happened to Russia. So I think it's a great time for India. For this is a century, this is a historical opportunity. Swami Vivekananda had predicted that one day this will happen after India gets independence and perhaps 100 years later India would come and become the, I think the greatest nation, create wealth and glory which she has never seen in entire history. So this is a historical opportunity for India I think and we have demonstrated I think I am not pride but we can say with great humility that in the field of nuclear technology, in the field of space program, in the field of information technology in telecom, we have demonstrated that, that India can do it. And this will be demonstrated in many fields. Today, India has become the R&D hub of the whole world.